Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. So, if you're ready to navigate the journey, stay with us today. This is an absolute wonderful journey that we're on. I, my new best friend, <laughs> Sam. <laughs> hello. Is, hello. How are you doing? Sam has a marvelous story to tell us. He has been on all kinds of adventures, uh, speaks Japanese and English, and all kinds of wonderful things. So let's get started. Let's don't waste time talking about. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot to talk there's about. There's a lot to talk about. <laughs> welcome, welcome, Thank welcome, you. Sam. Thank you for having now, me today. You are going, you're in the process of creating a new television station. Yes. And, and you're a chef. Chef, I like to eat. <laughs> and, and a surfer. Yeah. And you were on the Hokulea. And my God, there's so much. Yeah, yeah there's a lot. Let, there's yeah, a lot, there's a life, lot to live. Of life to live. A wonderful life to live. And so it blows me away to hear your Japanese when you look like you do. <laughs> I'm sure that's a that blows a lot, a of, lot people. of people. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting story. There's so many interesting stories in my life. I don't know if we have time to tell them all. I'll try and stick to the best ones anyway. Well, okay. And you grew up in Japan. Yeah. So, um, well, my family traveled a lot when I was younger. Uh, my family moved us to Japan when I was 11, and I went to public school over there. So you had to learn the language. I had to learn the language. I, the, I was lucky my homeroom teacher was the English teacher for the Japanese school. It's a public Japanese school. And he sat me in the front corner and kind of translated a little bit while he talked. And I, I picked it up after children about two do. years. Children, yeah, children yeah, well, are good at that. You're young and yeah. malleable and easy, easy to learn. It was a good, good experience, good time to be there and learn. I was there till I was 16. Um, what part of Japan? In Yokohama, mostly. Uh, close, it's about an hour away from Tokyo, 45 minutes from Tokyo. A lot of military. Yeah, there's a lot of military. There's several bases nearby. Negishi Base is the closest one right up on the hill. Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of history there, too. There's uh, old uh, foreigners' grave sites with some of the first missionaries to the area 100, 120 years ago. And it's really interesting walking. When I was young, going to school and then walking home, I'd walk through some of the graveyards, the old ones, and read how some missionary had like five attempts on his life by a ninja back 150 years ago. It's like, and I'm walking in that same area where these incredible things happen. Yeah, so. in Nagasaki, they have the show you where they hung the missionaries. Yeah, yep, yeah. yep. There's, a, there's a lot <laughs> of history. A kind yeah. of hard life for a missionary. Yeah, 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 it is. Yeah, so then, but you grew up there, so that's where you learned to cook as a... <clears throat> yeah, so I, I learned, well... I was born in the Bahamas, and I, I, my family, we've moved around to 20 or 30 countries. Uh, Japan is, was the longest, next to Hawaii. Hawaii, I've been here 20-some uh, years now. Bahamas? Yeah, Nassau. Nassau. I definitely don't look like I'm from no. the Bahamas. <laughs> what is your birth certificate? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, it's a it's very, very unique birth certificate. Actually, I was born in uh, 1977, I believe. They gained independence the year before, so... <laughs> When I lost my birth certificate, it took me almost three months to get a new birth certificate it's because of the country change and everything. Well, yeah. Now, what do you remember about the Bahamas? Oh, I, I don't remember much. I have been back to yep. Jamaica a couple times, but um, I like Hawaii. I think there's a lot that reminds me of uh, my youth. I don't recall it vividly, but I, there's things that make me feel good, like going to the beach. The weather. Uh, the weather, exactly. <laughs> And I yes. think it's just something that's subliminal that, that we felt as children that we um, relate to. The ocean. Yeah, the ocean, absolutely. The ocean is my life. Yes. We, and, you know, uh, we do have pictures of you uh, on a video in, in the ocean. Yeah, We have some video videos. one, I think it is. <laughs> and there you are. Yeah, to the secret spot in Waikiki. Secret? <laughs> yeah, How does Waikiki be yeah, secret? Yeah, I can't tell anybody where it is. <laughs> oh, okay. So we won't no, show too much no, of the picture because you good. can tell where it is. It's yeah. a really small day. But surfing is really one of the things that has kept me um, uh, healthy and, and focused. Uh, it's kept me away from a lot of uh, traps in life. <laughs> you know, I think uh, sports in general keep children they away do. from they a lot do. of traps. Yes. And yeah. um, yes. I've always found that surfing, you don't have a... Uh, don't have uh, an opponent, so you're, it's basically you against the ocean. 
it's basically you against yourself to see how far you can put yourself yeah. to do something on that one wave. It's um, it, it, it's good. It's it's good without. It's not a team sport, but it's it's a healthy, good lifestyle sport. I, I guess it's a team, you and and the ocean. Yeah, yeah it's a dance. It's a tandem dance. And sometimes it's not. It's not a dance. Sometimes yeah. it's judo with the, the ocean throwing you for a flip. So tell me now, when did you start this business of being a chef? How did that come about? Well, um, that is an interesting story. Um, I started a, uh, working for a travel station in Japan, the Travel Channel, the Japan Travel Channel in 2002. And uh, my uh, show was dedicated to showcasing Hawaii to the Japanese uh, public. And we, we did that show for almost 10 years. Every uh, two weeks we had a new episode. And, and by doing that, I shared all the different restaurants and activities to do in Hawaii. And that got me into tasting all the foods all the that food. all the people have. Do we have a, a clip of that one? I, of you as a chef? Or? Oh, talking. Maybe we have one of the um, of uh, one of our shows. So this is an opening. That's an, oh, that's one of your shows. Yeah, this is one. This is one of the newer shows, not the one 20 years ago. I'm definitely the same weight as there right now. Yeah. So this is one of your shows. Yeah. That's uh. The character I play in the show, I play myself. <laughs> and uh, play around and have fun and, and eat. Showcase Hawaii, what there is to do. And, and there's a lot to do in Hawaii that doesn't cost money. You don't have to spend money to enjoy your time here. You can just go to the beach, act goofy underwater, or, or just swim. Look at how blue that is. It is gorgeous. Isn't it? Yes. Showcasing the new international marketplace. Mm -hmm. And now you have restaurants. Where are they located? Oh, so right now, oh, right. are they near there? They're nearby there. My my main restaurant is a little takeout. It's not really a restaurant so much as it's a takeout. Late lunch in um, Royal Hawaiian Avenue. Uh, we showcase um, our our main product is a uh, garlic shrimp. Um, oh, wait a minute now. We're sitting here at lunchtime and no, 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 <laughs> I'm sorry. No. I, I knew if I brought it, we wouldn't be able <laughs> to do the show. We'd just be eating the whole yes. time. <laughs> this is your place? Yeah, well, this is a, a coffee shop that I, I recommend. It's a really good coffee shop. And Ed Kenny, everybody knows him, a uh, town. And this is a little video on his uh, uh, superet, Kaimuki superet. Really awesome guy there with a, a great. Uh, so now this is what you're showing in Japan. Yeah. So this is a show that's aired in Japan. It's uh, it's it's on the Travel Channel now, and um, people watch it before they come to Hawaii, see if they like any of the, the places, and go and, and try it out. And and I get to choose where we go, so I really get to focus on what I really think is good and interesting people, and, and you know, a good good meal and good time, good memories for people to have. Yes. Yeah. There's one memory. <laughs> that I saw on one of these days about you on the Hokulea. So mm. tell me about that. <laughs> I think I think uh, you're talking about the one where we caught the fish. <laughs> the one with the fish, yeah. yes. I and was, the shark. And yes. the shark, yep. There was quite a few uh, shark uh, stories on that trip. I was actually um, on the Kamahele, which is the escort vessel uh, following Hokulea from the Big Island to Palmyra. And uh, we hadn't caught any fish in a couple of days, and that's our main fresh food is fish. Everything else is cans and, uh, you know, dried food. So we finally caught this fish, and we're reeling it in. A and, big uh, fish. A big one, a big tuna. And oh. It, oh, we, it was, uh, we were looking at it, like, oh, this is going to feed us for a week. And everybody, we, we share food with the hokulea and the kamahele. Right. They sail side by side. Like, oh, everybody's going to have fresh fish and poke in. Man, right before we got to the boat, it just, the line went slack. I was like, oh, <laughs> I thought the, the fish got off the hook, but I still felt some drag. And as we pulled it in, we realized the shark had come and bit the entire fish off. The entire, <gasps> all that was left was just the head. And it was, the gills were still moving. And there's like, like spit, like a shark spit on the edge. It was just like, I'd never seen a shark. It must have been a, a huge shark. The, the, the head was about this big. So the fish must have been three feet. Four feet for a shark to just one bite, the whole thing is gone. But um, we turned that uh, so, unfortunate situation <laughs> so into. So you have uh, the head. We have the head, and I uh, um, I'd, I'd uh, talked to different sushi chefs about how they scrape the bones of fish to really get the, the best meat is off the scraped bones. 
So the crew was a little disappointed, but I, I chopped open the head and got a spoon and actually scraped it off all the, you know, the soft meat everywhere. And we had a really good meal. It fed everybody on the boat. That one, that one section just scraping off the fatty, super, super tasty. Um, <laughs> I know it kind of sounds weird, but it tasted delicious. It yeah, was really well, wonderful. Yeah. How long were you with the Hoke Lair? Well, I've, I, that trip is the main trip that I volunteered on. And uh, the total trip, uh, I think, was about five months, of which I, I did a couple of sections. Um, uh, I probably did about four months of the, the escort. Mostly the escort is what I was on on that, on that side. So uh, when was that? That was in 2007, 10 years ago, 11, 12 years ago. Yes. Time flies, man. <laughs> yes, yes. It was, it, was, it was good because um, it was one way for me to be able to give back to, uh, to the people that I really admire in, in the community. And, um, you know, when I started, it was volunteering here at the, at the harbor down at Sand Island and volunteering on these little inner island sails and whatnot, volunteering cleaning up the boat. And when I, I got invited on the, on the escort, I, I didn't have a real uh, gift to give. I was just cooking, cleaning, helping, whatever, until we got to Japan. And then when we got to Japan, I was able to translate, and uh, that was my gift that I could actually help uh, on, on that voyage. So it was, it was really uh, inspiring. And, and actually, that's what made me decide to start a restaurant. Because after the four or five months that I was gone, I came back completely broke and uh, <laughs> realized I had to have some sort of income if I were to do these kind of trips again. And, and that got me kind of on the mindset of opening up a business. So how many restaurants do you have? Well, oh, are they here or Japan? We have, or? Um, we, in Waikiki, in Oahu, no, we yeah. opened up five, of oh which only one is surviving. Oh. So I've learned a lot, yes. <laughs> to, put it, to put it in a good way. One, and, uh, is one is that? surviving. One is surviving. That's the one, one is, we saw. That's the yeah. one we saw in Waikiki on Royal Hawaiian. It's just a little tiny alley, takeout, late lunch, but um, we do really good there. We have one restaurant in Japan that opened up a year ago. Um, kind of slow. It's a little bit outside the main city, but it's a good uh, step in, a good uh, slow acclimatization. We're acclimating to the Japanese style. We're not really promoting it that much over there yet, but it's a good, it's a good step in the direction we want to go. So you, you're going to have restaurants in both? Yeah, yeah. I wanna, my goal is to open up, a, we're, we're actually opening up another restaurant in Waikiki called uh, Ko. It's a tiki bar concept. Um, that's uh, planning to be open next month, August or September, hopefully. Um, things take time. But um, it's, it's a really cool concept. We're using all different carvers to carve tikis and wood designs and stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah. That, a that real be... Hawaii then. Yeah, yeah. I think that's... Because that's, that's lost need in that. Waikiki. Yeah, exactly. That's Everything's lost. cleaned up and yes. it's nice, but uh, that's not Hawaii. It's not Hawaii, so no. I'd like, I'd like to bring a little bit more of that mystical kind of... Uh, you're not old, old enough to remember the magic of Waikiki, but it used to be really magic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I now it's imagine. very commercial. Yeah, there's See? no, there's no speaking birds around the corner that might lead you down somewhere. It's just just a city. Yeah, so I'd like to create a little bit more magic down there. That's our goal. That's your goal. Now, so in creating this television station, yeah. you will feature your restaurants and other <laughs> places in Hawaii to the Japanese audience. Yes. Is that? That's the goal. That's the goal. Yeah, so our, our, our goal is to actually um, try and open up the Asian market. And, and we're not up and running yet. So these are just goals. Cool. And uh, the, the concept is similar to my shows that we have now. I'd be bringing other people, other speakers, Chinese speakers, or Korean speakers, and do kind of the same format of visiting places that are, um, that are good and, and worthy to be uh, enjoyed by tourists or visitors. Yeah. Well, we need to take a break. Mm -hmm. And when we come back, you can tell us more about your vision and how you work into the vision. Okay, okay. we'll Sounds be right good. back. Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana 
all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Stan Osterman, a host here on ThinkTech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness here on the island. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Mahalo. Aloha. I'm Marcia and we're back. We are navigating the journey and this is an incredible journey. We don't usually get to go all these wonderful places and we have our, are, are we calling you a chef or a producer or what is it we're calling Sam? I'm trying, trying to be human. That's my goal. Oh, okay. As human as I can. <laughs> well, but you have been all over the world and gathering recipes and memories mem memories <laughs> yes yeah. and now let's take a look at some of your memories how's yeah. that yeah absolutely we can uh well, part of um what i've done uh I'm traveling i've taken photos but uh maybe some of some of the things we can talk about is the restaurant the recipes and a lot of those i've i've gotten from uh wow places that i've been to uh, this is uh, our menu up here you can see these are our four basic things, the shrimp, the steak, the chicken, and the poke. Well, what you might find interesting is on the left, the name, you see the shrimp, and then underneath right. that, it's shrimp in Chinese, shrimp in Korean, shrimp in Japanese, and then it's uh, the word for shrimp in Hawaiian as well. So we have uh, five languages there, trying to make it a little more inclusive. Um, I know it's, a, it's an experience to go travel, but food you don't want to guess no. so it's it's uh, <laughs> i'd like to make it easier for people to order the concept is you can pick one of those and then you pick a sauce which is of course in in the five languages that i have up there and then you can add it make it a salad or a rice bowl or however you like trying to make it that, easier now for, that that is it that's the one that exists right now this is the one that exists right so now so we this can is go down there now. you can go there right now it's oh, okay. open it's Great. open today today and then uh well, this is a photo of our spicy garlic shrimp See, it's spicy with the red there. Um, that looks... It's quite spicy. <laughs> it's quite, it's quite spicy. spicy. And there's a lot of garlic. Okay. When we, when we make the garlic sauce, we, uh, we cook it for about four hours. So a lot of the, the strength of the garlic is gone. So you can eat a lot of it without um, overdosing on garlic. <laughs> That's... Uh, yes. Now, so you, are, you have those restaurants. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm, I'm trying to get the concept of this new television station and why your television station is different from all of the other television stations. Oh, ah, okay. Okay. Now, what makes it unique? Okay, so uh, similar to the, to the menu that we just had, I'm, I'm trying to create a station that is inclusive to the Asian market. Uh, Cause to, what I have is in Japanese. Yeah. Yes. So, so we which have is our focus is on Japanese. Because it's in Japanese. And... They were nice enough to give me English, so I put... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you can read it. <laughs> yeah. So it's a, it's a concept. We're still building it out. We haven't actually gotten on the air yet. So this is um, we're still building out the concept. But it's, uh, it's basically a traveler's uh, network for the Asia market to show them what to do while they're in Hawaii. Um, it's something that can be watched in Japan. We're trying to tie in with a, a travel channel in Japan so that they can see it in Japan before they come here and kind of make a list of where they want to go. But we're trying to get it not just for the Japanese. We're trying to include uh, Chinese speakers and Korean speakers. These are all goals that we're working towards. We haven't actually started our broadcasting yet, but that is our concept. That's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. And is it shown in Hawaii or just in Asia? It'll uh, be shown here in Hawaii. And then, uh, not that I could read it, but... <laughs> you can practice your Japanese, <laughs> learn from it. Maybe it's a good yeah. learning station. But uh, we, will, we are going to uh, try to get it over into the Asia market as well. So that's the, that's the whole idea, yeah. so that they get a sense of Hawaii before yeah. they come. Yeah, sense of Hawaii before they come. And, and um, when people come to Hawaii, they, they get into their hotel rooms, and there's, their TV station is all in a language they don't understand. So one channel that just kind of introduces them to Hawaii a little bit, 
I think oh, so it, it'll be in the hotel? Yeah, we're hoping to have it all broadcast here in Hawaii as well. In, in, in the hotels, hotels as well, yeah. Yeah. Now, so many of them book and pay for everything before they leave yeah, Japan. Yeah. So how do you get, get around that? Market. that? Yeah. It, there is, um, there is a, a large amount of people that come as a tour group where they're already set in everything they can do. But it's still nice to give them the information. And even... Um, well, the even, returning ones. Yeah, the returning ones kind of come on, their, on yeah. their own. But even if, it's, uh, even if we're sh showcasing a place that they're already planning to go to, say Pearl Harbor, which a lot of people go to, having a show on Pearl Harbor and explaining it a little you more. Did, you did a deeply. show on Pearl Harbor, didn't you? Yeah, we did. We've done, we've done uh, episodes over there as well. But it's nice to have that knowledge, even it, not, so, not only to entice people to go, but also to give them information for when they do visit, or, or just information in general. There, so. there is one restaurant in Kailua, and I thought, I've never seen any local people. They're all Japanese waiting in line around the corner to get in there. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's like, what? It's incredible. If you, if you advertise properly, they'll come. <laughs> yes. It's amazing. Yeah. It is absolutely amazing. Yeah. So how long have you been working the, the two, bringing the two together, the idea of bringing your, your skills, your restaurants, and your love of Hawaii into this concept. One big umbrella. Um, well, the, the TV shows I've been doing almost 20 years. Uh, the restaurant has been about 10 years. Uh, so the TV show you're doing now are all in Japan. Japan yeah. Well, so we don't get to see any of those. Actually, we can't. You can see some of the shows here. We have. Did uh, we have a minute or two of one of the shows? Yeah. I don't know. There we, oh, there we oh, go. There we yep. are. That's uh, one of the new uh, businesses, uh, hotels, the Lelo Hotel, um, restaurant in Waikiki. That vegetarian. Oh no, that's not vegetarian. That, that's steak. Look vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> that look vegetarian. There's some yeah. good vegetarian restaurants, though. We've showcased some really delicious places. They're really. Good, yeah. that, that one looks good. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> you can tell by the size <laughs> of my <laughs> belly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what was the one where you were dipping the sandwich in the soup? Oh, that's a, that's a place, uh, Piggy, uh, Pig and the Lady has this really good sandwich that they, uh, they dip in the soup. It's kind of like a take on the au jus, which is uh, very tasty. It's hard, hard to stop eating some of these places. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so now back to the shows you were doing in Japan. You said you did eight years or eight shows? Or? Uh, we did uh, nine years, probably about 400 shows, 400 episodes in Japan from uh, 2002 to 2009 or 2010. And then I started another TV show called Made in Hawaii TV, which is a show you can see here in Hawaii right now in all the hotels. It's also aired on um, Japan Airlines and Hawaiian Airlines in flight. Uh, it's in Japanese, but you can click on it and, and watch the show, uh, showcase a little bit about Hawaii. And uh, the other TV show that's aired on the Travel Channel in Japan is called Hawaii Local News. Kind of si similar concept, just different name and different um, market. Our goal is to try and uh, bring all of those under one umbrella, all the food, all the different episodes, and bring new faces, not just me, bring um, young kids that want to do a TV show and see, you know, see from their, their level what they like. What um, about well, uh, music, Hawaii, Hawaiian music? We, we do. Not, we, not, yeah, contemporary. Yeah, we, we do well, a lot Well, some of, contemporary, Hawaiian contemporary. But the old Hawaiian music, you know, the, the, you don't see it anymore. You don't, all of those wonderful artists yeah. that we don't hear anymore. Can yeah. you find them? Yeah, we, we have done a couple episodes, a couple documentaries on some of the mu musical artists here. Uh, we try and add their music in where we can when we get the rights to do it and, and showcase different artists, um, even following an artist around and, and where they go to eat and then who they talk to and where they get their inspiration from music from. So there's yeah. a lot of, uh, yeah, the music is absolutely wonderful. I, 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 um, I host the, the yearly uh, ukulele picnic over, it's a ukulele festival down at Kakako. been mm -hmm. doing that for about six years. It's a Japanese put on show, but they showcase all ukulele Hawaiian music. And there's people from Thailand that come over that are ukulele musicians in Thailand, and it's a, it's a really fun fun. Uh, Do you get thing. halals? 
done uh, halal uh, yeah. on your, in any of your shows? We have done uh, halals before. Because uh, the Japanese love. Oh my gosh! Yes, they love they love the halals, and each halal is a little different, and they all uh, each each group follows different uh, kumus. I I uh, host the the Pan Pacific Festival too for the hula side, and um, every year we have all these different halals coming, hundreds of people from Japan just to showcase their, their hula here in Hawaii. It's really nice. Twenty years ago, I think it's twenty years ago, Derek and I. That's how I met. We mm. met. We were both working for the International uh, Hula Festival. Uh. I think it's been twenty years. Yeah. Yes. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Some of these uh, events are forty years running. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. incredible. Yes. But yeah. That's. A, I'd, I'd like to bring that all together, and it's it's food, it's activity, it's ex, it's culture, it's experience, it's music, it's uh, it's it's what we do living here. Just being here and absorbing it, but uh, people that can't live here, I like to memorialize it, record it, and then edit it and allow the them to share it The only thing is you can't us. record, you can't, you can't, rec can't bottle the trade winds. No, <laughs> you can't bottle the trade winds and you can't bottle the taste of food either, so <laughs> I agree there. Yes. Well, and so how long do you think it'll be before you're up and ready to go? Well, we're hoping uh, within the next uh, two months to, to be up and running. So it's a little short time, time frame. We've been working on it quite a while, but uh, we should be up and running within the next two months. So, but it won't look like television we're used to. Is that it? Yeah, it won't look like television we're used to. We're, the, the goal is to kind of create an inform, information uh, hub with little, it won't have commercials so much as uh, little information tidbits. Maybe little uh, vignettes. Yeah, yeah. Th yeah, little vignettes, basically three minutes or so. Maybe something from the police department about walking with your cell phone, little information things, um, not a full 30-minute episode or something like that. So it'll be a little bit different than a regular TV. Wow. Well, we're almost out of time. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure to be here. Thank you. And you will have to find your restaurant because I love, I love, 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 love just looking at it. <laughs> just looking at it. And you will come back and keep a surprise as you move through your project and how you getting along with it. You know, I really appreciate being here today. It, this is a real pleasure. And I'd like to say that I've been guided by my stomach all of my life. <laughs> I'll find you. I'll, I'll, I'll bring I'll, a I'll, plate lunch next time I'm here. <laughs> I'll find you. Okay. Well, thank you so much. This has really been a pleasure. And we'll see you next time.